What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Lil Chili again. And I just wanted to shoot another video. Uh, this one is a reference to, you know, it may help you uh, get a better idea of tuning and more of an idea of why one carburetor or let's just say one motor, one complete motor may tune differently than another complete motor, you know, and you just, you never took the, took everything apart and everything, you know, um, this might, this might be what's going on inside the two different motors. And basically it breaks down to the two different carburetors. And um, just to keep everything simple, we just gonna say it as long, low end needles and short, low end needles. Um, the carburetor to the right and the needle to the right is a low, a long low end needle. The one to the left is a short low end needle. Now the main difference that you'll see is the length. Let's line them up side by side. Just the overall length of the whole needle. Now, of course, you know, different companies may design their needle different ways and so on and so forth. So the actual body may be the same length and then the actual needle part may be a different length, so on and so forth. But the major preference is your long low needles are going to basically be longer than your short low end needles. And the carburetors, you know, some manufacturers may send you a motor that has a long low end needle then that same manufacturer may have a different motor in the lineup that'll have a short low end needle so for you know just the sake of this conversation and the sake of this video you know these are two different uh carburetors from two different companies because uh, the way it seems from what i've what i've been hearing i guess pretty much there's only a handful of manufacturers all together for these motors and stuff. And then you have different companies that source these manufacturers, you know, and um, and basically rebrand motors and stuff, you know, and may throw in a design tip here and there, alter something here and there. But basically from what I've been hearing, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but there's only a handful of manufacturers and stuff. You know, and pretty much those are your bigger name ones. You know, your Picos, Nova Rossi, OS, um, SH, and I believe Alpha, and there may be a there may be a couple more. I think Go Engines. I know they they the companies folded, but I think at one time they was you know an OEM manufacturer. But um, like I said, I, I believe there's only you know a handful of manufacturers you know, for all the different brands of, of motors that's out there. So um, as far as getting back to tuning and the different style of, you know, needles and everything, like let's bring it as far as two stage idling. You know, you go wide open, you know, you got your light smoke stream, your light smoke stream, you know, so your high end needle is, you feeling is, is there, you know. And then you come off the throttle and your motor hangs at a high idle, you know, almost like, you know, you got an eighth or a quarter throttle still, still being applied. Well, what that's basically is, and then let me, let me not go too fast. And then after that high um, idle, if you let it sit for a second or even blip the throttle, when it's sitting still, the idle will drop after a couple seconds. That's two stage idling. Now that's basically you getting close to a race tune, but it also could be um, a number of other things. It could be an air leak, whether in a, the front the front uh, bearing, it could be air leak in the tank, it could be air leak around the carburetor, anywhere where you have a, a seal, you know, a, a air leak can cause that same 
a two stage idling, regardless of how you tune in the mode or regardless of what style of carburetor. But you know, for the sake of conversation, everything's buttoned up, your motor, everything, your drive line, everything is fine. Linkages is fine. But you're getting this two stage idle. Well, with a long low end needle, the main thing is, and it's a basic thing even with the short low end needle, but the long low end needle has more control over the whole throttle range. Whereas though a short low end needle really only affects idle and let's say right off idle. So say you idling around 6,000 RPM, I don't even recall what what uh, RPM they idle at because it's gonna be different for everybody, you know, but let's just say you're idling at 6,000 RPM. It's a good idle. Come off full throttle and then it's, you know, as you stop, instead of it dropping straight down to 6,000 RPM, it's hanging somewhere around 8,000 RPM. In a couple seconds, it drops down to 6,000. Well, with a low end, this style of, of, of needle right here, let's see if I can get that to focus. Uh, maybe I should just let it sit right there. But with this style right here, this style, you would just keep leaning it out, leaning it out, and you were riching your high end needle and your throttle stop. This one right here, your throttle stop. Try to leave that be. Don't mess with this until you get this one, your low end needle, pretty situated. And, um, You'll just keep leaning this out, leaning this out till when you come off that high end pass, your idle, it, it hangs in the air, hangs at 8,000 or whatever the case may be, but it doesn't drop. And it hangs there for, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever the case may be. You're headed in the right direction. It seems as though like, oh man, you know, my car now is running lean on the bottom, lean on the bottom. Now I, what it is is actually, you know, your, uh, your car hit it in the right direction, your motor hit it in the right direction as far as your tune on the low end, especially with these long needle carburetors because they affect not only your idle, but they affect going all the way up to basically full throttle because there's, there's no, there's really not no, um, the needle never really comes out of the needle, the spray bar from the other side. So your fuel comes in through the high end, goes in through your spray bar. So some are manufactured where the spray bar is just part of the carburetor body. Some have that third, that third needle right there, which is actually just an adjustment to the spray bar. And of course, like I said, there's different designs, but this is this needle right here is not really a needle in a sense like this. It's actually a hollow tube. And that hollow tube has a couple holes around the tube. And so your fuel comes in through your main needle, just like turning turning the spigot on. So you turn that spigot wide open, as much fuel that can come through this part right here from being wide open is gonna come through there. Now this right here is gonna meter all of that fuel coming through the high end in through this spray bar and coming across you know coming across through your venturi out the bottom into into your uh your, your your crankshaft through your crankshaft into your crankcase and so on then up into the uh piston area combustion area so what happens is this needle never really comes all the way out the spray bar so it's going to it's going to have the most effect or more effect i should say than your high end needle so what people do you know they get that that lean or they get some type of bug and they immediately go to the high end needle and with this style of carburetor that's just going to have you chasing your tail chasing your tail so and it's a general rule and it can go for the short ones too 
if you if you two stage idling, lean lean out your uh, your bottom end needle first. All things being you know considered, lean this out first. Leave the high end alone. Once you got the low end where it's a high idle after coming off a full speed pass, you know, and it's not dropping down after a few seconds or whatever the case may be, 10, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. Now what you do is if you're getting any kind, kind of bog or whatever, you know, at high throttle, now what you do is it's more than, more than likely going to be a... Uh, you can get a lean bog or you can get a, um, a rich bog and they're going to pretty much almost sound the same. But you'll make your, your final adjustments here. But you'll start noticing that your throttle response is more crisp. You'll start noticing the transition from idle through quarter throttle and through mid throttle up to about three quarters throttle. All of that will be a lot smoother. It won't go from and it'll be man and it'll have more of a, a throttle curve to it and that'll be based off of this this needle alone and like i said this needle controls basically all the way up to full throttle once you hit full throttle and it's pulled to max depending on what venture you have in here more than likely this needle will not come let me see That spray bar to the left. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me try to get this. Get that Venturi up out of there. All right. So that spray bar to the left. Like I said, that's just a hollow tube. That's that dreaded mid-speed needle, third needle that they always say don't mess with. And I agree with them. If you don't know too much or you're not too comfortable... I, I say whatever it comes with from the factory, leave it there, you know, and just do all your adjustments to this low end side, which would be this needle and your high end. But what I'm going to do is when I'm going to show you the, what's crazy is if you look at them side by side, the actual needle part is damn near the same length. And what makes it long on this particular one is the fact that the overall body is where you get your length from. Also, you can notice that with this one, you can see the, the basic shape and how it is at the end to the point versus this one has more of a, a blunt more of a blunt tip to it. Let's see. That one has more of a blunt tip to it. Whereas the, this one has more of a finer point. So those are different little things that affect, you know, your tuning and stuff. And if you're not aware of what, what type of needle you have on a low end, if you're not aware of that inside your carburetor, you know, you'll end up tuning it like, you know, oh, get this style of carburetor or this this company's carburetor. And you'll tune it thinking that it's easy, easy, easy and stuff. And all what it could have been was you may have had, you know, one of these two style of carburetor, uh, low end needles. And the way they're telling you to tune it, they may be telling you to tune it based off of this shorter one, which basically... Most of your tuning is going to be done with your high end needle. And if you can see, I just pulled both of these. These apart from the last time they've been ran. This one is off of a GS motor from an on road car. And this motor has not been ran in God knows how long. I'm talking maybe 10, 15 years, maybe. Let me see, 2009. 2009 when they had 301 Raceway and uh, Brandywine Merlin. I think that's the last time this one been ran. And I haven't treated it right since then. Uh, you know, shame on me. <laughs> but, you know, you can see basically how far down that high end is in there. 
and this is a track star and you can see where the needle is left on this one almost flush barely in from flush and that's the thing with a shorter style low-end needle your high-end needle is going to do most of the adjustment so that's where you're going to get a lot of your your needle settings where it's two and three turns in from flush so on and so forth usually when they're talking about oh i'm you know i'm not even a couple hours past flush you know on my high end they're usually talking about a carburetor that has a long low end needle so if you take them talking about i'm just a couple hours in from flush you know and you have this style of carburetor and you go to tune it how they say theirs is you're going to be very rich on this high end and then you're going to be super lean on this low end or you may be super rich but you may end up leaning this this low end so much that when you come off idle i mean when you come off off a full speed pass you hear sounding like a uh, machine gun style that's because this is so lean because to compensate for this to be so rich and then your idle gap you know it will be wide open so your idle gap is that right there when the throttle's fully closed and it hits up against this throttle stop uh let's see all oh, this reverse stuff on the camera but it hits up against this throttle stop right here and that gives you that little space right there. Same basic thing with this one. You know, it hits up against that throttle stop and that's your gap. Now that's where this right here comes into play. Let me see it. All right, that's what this is, part number. And what this is, is just a little case a little jeweler's drills. Got your different millimeters. As you see, you know, obviously I, I run a couple motors, you know, after they broke in with a 0.5 millimeter idle gap. But I say most motors, you know, and I'ma just speak from, I got most of my motors are Nova Rossi. I got a couple works. Um, and Argus, but most of them like between 0.5 and 0.6 idle gap when once they're fully broken in. Now before before they you know they're broken in, you may have to set it wider, just depending on on you know your uh, your location, you know the fuel you run and so on and so forth. But basically, you just take this. You know, you know exactly what what millimeter it is, and just like you do with your paper clip, you know. Uh, let's see, here. stick it down in there, push close, and when you start feeling resistance on on this uh this jeweler's drill, and of course you're not going to stick the uh the drill bit part in. You want to stick the, uh, you know, the smooth side down in there. But once you feel a little bit of resistance, once you close your item, that's once you close the uh, whole carb up, you know, then you can stop adjusting this idle gap screw right here or this throttle stop screw. You know, and then now that you got your idle gap working, you know, you know exactly where that's set at. Now... You can do all of your adjustments that you got to do strictly off your low end needles. This right here definitely comes in handy, not only with the long style, but really with the low end. I mean, the short style, too, because the short style. Let's just say. Let's just pull this all the way open. Uh all right, so it's all the way open. Now, if I was to sit this in here, you know, let me just sit it beside it like this. You can see at full open, if it was just flush, you know, 
it's not even halfway through the uh through the car body. Now with this one, we're gonna go full open. Let's see, let me do it this way. Full open. And when I sit this flush, you can see that that basically still will be sticking inside of the spray bar to my right. You know, so that's the major difference. And let me screw it in here. And I know this video is getting pretty long and everything. I thought I'd be able to do this a lot quicker and stuff, but you know, y'all know my motto. I ain't really with the productions and stuff like that. <laughs> So just bear with your boy. So I'm gonna make this flush. So you can see this is flush. Let me see, put this one in here. And like I said, you know, even with this, you see that one only screwed in a little bit to make it flush. I ain't even getting no turns. But now you can see pretty much, uh, I'm, You can see how much a full throttle basically a hole. You can barely see the tip. Now, full throttle. Full throttle. This needle still sitting inside the spray bar. So, like I said, you know, if you know your style of carburetor and everything, what type of low end needle you have, you know, it makes tuning just that much easier. And once it's, once again, when you get that two-stage idle, tune your low-end needle on both. Tune your low-end needle on both first. That's all things considered that, you know, your idle gap is good. Your motor's broken in. Um, there's no air leaks nowhere. Tune your low needle. Lean that out little by little. Don't take no big swings, you know. When I say little by little, I'm talking about not even that much. So if, it, if this is where you're starting at, you're hanging up in the idle, right there. Make a couple passes, you're hanging up in the idle, you know, a little bit longer, go on the right way, go right there. Now your idle's hanging a little bit longer, Go right there. You know, it's getting a little bit longer, but it's still dropping. Right there. Once you get both right there, that's that's about four four sixteenths of a turn. Once you get both right there, and of course that ain't exact science, but once you get both right there, now your idle should be, you know, hanging high. Where it's like, man, this idle never coming down. Once that happens. You know, that's when you go to your throttle stop. And remember I said, you really don't got to mess with this. But you're running good on your high-speed needle. You know, it's not cutting out on you from leaning. It's not, you know, gurgling or nothing like that from being rich up top. All that's, all that's good. Now you're having a high idle. No droppage in your idle. Take this throttle stop right here. Boom, like that. Immediately, you'll hear your auto drop down. And then what you wanna do is, you don't wanna go too far either way with your throttle stop. Cause like I said, from the factory, this should be pretty good. It should be set, especially for braking. And once your motor's broken, you know, you can pretty much set this to whatever the recommended from the manufacturer. Some of them, like the Nova Rossi Roma 25, they recommend 0.6 idle gap. Most of the worst engines that I've come across, they recommend once it's fully broken in, around 0.5 to 0.6, depending on you know the weather, your fuel, and so on and so forth. But now with this short throttle, I mean the short low end needle, like I said, you know you see basically from. That's that's closed, I idle, open, 
You still you still basically running a little bit on on your uh, low end needle. Once you get about right here, as you see that it came up. Once you get almost a little bit past quarter throttle, you're right at the tip. Now you're basically running on your high end needle, and from from this point all the way to this point, that's all that's all your high end needle right there. So that's what you'll be tuning. So for this one, you two staging, you know, you make your adjustment, boom, you know. Now, like I said, this is a short, short bow end needle, so it'll already be a whole lot further in. You know, you're not gonna be able to do it from flush. So more than likely, you're gonna be already starting somewhere around right here with flush with this inside part. There's a little ring in here. You'll more than likely be somewhere down here to start with. And even when you do that, boom. You see it? It's still a full throttle comes all the way out. So that's where you'll make your adjustments on your short throat, your short lower needle. Once again, you hot you you two staging. You know, you're two staging. Boom. Little bit. Boom, little bit, boom, little bit. Now you just you just at a high idle. You know, you come right here. Remember, this is good. Boom. You're good. Drops down. May have to drop a little bit more. From that point on, this one, you really only gonna have to adjust it. Unless you got modded motors and, and all of that where they get finicky and stuff like that as far as you know um it's modded you know it's going to basically tune differently but a stock motor you should barely have to touch this anymore once you get these set let your car warm up you know let your car warm up the next time you run you got them Fully, fully done from day one. You tune good. You drop them straight to idle. You go out the next day. You know, you start your car. You done preheated it to 200 some degrees. Preheated it. Started running around and stuff. You notice, oh man, I'm two staging right off the bat. Don't touch a thing. That's normal. Because what, what's going on now is, you know, you have, yeah, your cooling head. You got your fuel going in there and it's cooling the crankcase. You got cool fuel. Your fuel is nice and cool inside the crankcase, you know, and as you just starting to run your car, that cool fuel and stuff is cooling the motor off on top of air coming past your heat sink. That's cooling the motor off. So it's going to throw your, your last tune sort of out of whack until this motor right here along with this chassis plate and this is something i haven't really heard too many people talk about but this chassis plate if you notice your motor is connected to those motor mounts those motor mounts are connected to your chassis and what it is this chassis plate is like a big heat sink and basically what's going on is if you ever touch your, your chassis at the end of the day after you're running, you know, to bring your, your flywheel and your piston to the bottom dead center, you're going to feel how hot that chassis is, or at least how warm it is underneath this motor, especially. And you can feel, feel the heat all the way as far back as back here. And you can feel the heat all the way up here underneath the gas tank from, from your pipe and stuff. You know, all of this is radiating heat. And as this motor is heating up, you know, as you're warming up your, your car and everything, your motor, this chassis is absorbing some of that heat. Then once this chassis absorbs as much heat as it can, this chassis starts reflecting the heat back into your motor. You know, that's the source of the heat. So the chassis basically absorbed everything it could absorb. Now the motor basically, based off your tune, is going to be, you know, the source of the heat. And it's going to keep 
it's gonna keep the heat in as as long as it's tuned, you know, fairly fairly good, or it's gonna continue to get hot if it's you know too lean on the bottom, too lean on the top, you know, it's gonna continue to get hot. So, like I say, you know, before you do any type of adjustments and everything, make sure that you know your chassis is warm. And what they call that is heat saturation. Now, now let me let me say this, and I know I'm already 30 some minutes into this, but you know, I really wanted to talk about this. You know, I've been I've been doing this for a while, but one thing I'll say is, you know, I'm the type where no matter what I'm doing or how good I feel I'm doing it, I'm always willing to learn. And something that got brought to my attention just a couple of days ago is that when it comes down to long, low end needles, there's actually different styles of long, low end needles. Some of them come where when you go to full throttle, you're right here, full throttle, where mine really doesn't come out of the spray bar. You know, some of them, the tip, will actually come out of the spray bar and be just sitting at the very front of that spray bar to your right. Whereas though this one is still pretty much inside of the spray bar. You can just, you know, it's about halfway down through that taper, you know, but it still has enough, I would say, to come to about right here, you know. I would say once it's pulled wide open, there's still about right here of that needle inside of that spray bar. Then you have some where you come wide open and that taper down in there, it may be, imagine now I got this pole wide open and where you start to see that taper, some long needles, that's as far, far as much you're gonna see of the needle. And the rest of it's still in here and it's just a fine taper on the end of that needle. And even though it would be pulled wide open like this, there's still way more than what this needle is, you know, inside of the spray bar over here. So, you know, you just got, got to be aware, you know, of what type of carburetor you're dealing with and what type of needles. You know, like I was looking at the Novorossi, uh, the Novorossi instruction manuals and parts, you know, lists and everything. And for three different carburetors the illustration of the low end needle all look the same but they all have different part numbers which is telling me that okay there's some type of running change or some type of fine minute change between those low end needles even though the picture may show all of them looking the same so you know go ahead go inside open your um Unscrew your low end needle or just pull your Venturi out, you know, open your throttle up and see, you know, whether you got a short, a short needle carburetor, you know, short low end needle carburetor or a long low end needle carburetor. If you got a short needle carburetor, rule of thumb, more than likely you're going to be a lot leaner on your high end than what you would be on a long needle carburetor. Long needle carburetor, you're gonna be a lot more richer on your high end and more of your adjustments gonna come from this, this low end throttle, I mean low end needle. On the short, more of your adjustments gonna come from the high end needle versus your low end needle. That's just a general rule of thumb. Yeah. Now, like I said, I don't know at all, so, you know, if there's anything somebody can add to it, put it in the comments or whatever the case may be, you know, shoot a video and, and let me know where I went wrong at and stuff, you know, or, you know, if if you would like to just try it out and stuff, you know, take your carburetor, you know, when you get a chance, just open, take your Venturi out, pull that throttle slide open and just see what you got, you know, it, it, it's, it's worth checking, it's worth checking if it, you know, can uh, stop you from having uh, headaches with your tune and stuff like that, you know. And pretty much 
just having that knowledge, you know, will basically uh, give you a little bit better idea as far as when you're hearing your tune and stuff, you know, okay, what, what should I do? Well, if I know I got a short needle carburetor and, you know, I'm, I'm leaning out, you know, uh, when I come in, I'm, I'm two staging. I'm two staging when I come in and stuff. All right, okay. I'm going to just tap this this uh, needle carburetor slightly, slightly. But I'm going to also be pretty lean already on my high end. So I'm going to have to richen my high end up a little bit. And then I may have to come back to my uh, to my idle stop, you know. But as I was saying in the beginning of the video, if this is already set and you really don't want to mess with it, the process is still pretty much the same. Get that high idle and then richen your your uh, your high speed needle, you know, and just richen it little by little. Whereas though you're still getting your power. You know, especially at full throttle, still getting your power, you're still getting your um your light smoke trail and everything, you know, and pretty much this is going to be feeding just that that much more fuel to compensate for you leaning out the low end, whereas though that extra fuel is what's going to bring your idle your idle down and everything. So, hope that wasn't too confusing and everything. Hope that helps somebody, you know. That's just little things that I, that I came across that, you know, people taught me and stuff, you know, because like I said, um, I never really knew that there was different needles and stuff, you know, years ago running a 10th scale torn, you know, an 8th scale arm road. That's when, you know, they told me, oh, man, you know, what's, what style of needle carburetor you got, you know, when I ran into troubles and stuff and I was just chasing my tail, chasing my tail. And then that's when, you know, they showed me, okay, you got a long low end style and you got a short low end style. And then once they ran through the steps, which they probably explained it way better than what I could. But, you know, once they explained it, it seemed like, oh man, you know, once I knew what type of style of carburetor I had, it just became that much easier to actually tune for that style of carburetor, you know? And at the end of the day, basically it's all the same. You know, if you're two staging, lean your your uh your low end needle, you know, step by step, little bit by little bit, you know, and you know to compensate, you may have to richen your high end needle, because remember this high end needle controls all of the fuel, just like the water hose effect. You know, turn the spigot on, and then this is where you know you got the uh. The, the water hose in your hand and you know you're doing this with it that's basically what this part is and if you turn this where you lean this all the way out I don't care how hard you squeeze you know the other end of the water hose ain't but so much water gonna come out so this is what's delivering all your fuel this is what's metering all your fuel you know these meter your fuel you know and all this does is stop your your burrow, your carburetor burrow from closing so much where it's not getting no air in there. That's all what, what these two needles right here do. Idle stop, throttle stop, you know, they got all kinds of names, you know, idle screw, you know, but that's what these two do. And like I said, on three needle carbs, this is really not a needle, it's basically a spray bar. On some carburetors, you know, I have to take that back. On some carburetors, this may be also some type of needle, but I haven't ran into none that's, that's built like that. I just heard of them. But um, most of the time, this is going to be just a hollow tube that your low end go in and out of. And basically, you see, this is just backed off. So this same tube on this one is just preset from the factory made into the body of the carburetor and you don't have to do nothing all you got to do if you're not comfortable treat this the same way leave it how it came don't mess with it but you know i know that was a long video and everything but you know 
I hope that helps, you know, as far as just getting an idea of everything. But, um, all right, y'all, you know, maybe the next one, you know, maybe I could try to condense it a little bit and make it a little bit better, you know, and I'm going to try to get a, get some footage of me actually tuning, you know, a carburetor that's two stage idling and stuff, you know, and tune it down to a one stage idle. You know, I can't make no promises on how quickly I can get that out to y'all because there's a lot of things going on right now, you know, with family and stuff and everything. You know, I just really haven't had too much time to mess with the cars, you know, but I'm going to try to get that out to y'all as soon as possible. But uh, for now, you know, just, just like I said, take a look at your carburetors and stuff, you know. I don't, but like, I just want to get a quick couple shout outs too, man. You know, shout out to uh, my man uh, Corey over there, TTR Racing and stuff. You know, got some good tips. You know, like to give a shout out to a uh, Family Affair uh, Nitro over there doing some good things. Got good tips. You know, good running videos and so on. You know, shout out to uh, my man Nitro Bird. You know, he out there building his track and everything. You know, I told him early, you know, but uh, once he get that track built, he going to be coming straight out the front door, straight to club racing. <laughs> I like that, you know, but like, you know, as, as shout out to uh, Crucial RC, you know, Crucial RC, you know, really doing some good things over there, you know, fifth scale, you know, eighth scale, you know, the whole nine, you know, and shout out to my boy Brooklyn Beast. You know, like I said, y'all go check out Brooklyn Beast and um, Lights Out Nitro. Shout out to Lights Out Nitro. I remember I was talking to him a while ago about the Nitro TC3 clutches. And um, Lights Out Nitro, if you get a chance and you made it to this part of the video, check out Brooklyn Beast. Brooklyn Beast has a video with that Nitro TC3 and the syntax clutches, you know, and and he did a modification to the two speed on on um, one of his clutches, his two speed clutch, you know, real informative and everything, you know, and he's and he's doing eight scale off road too, you know, so y'all check him out too and stuff, you know, and like I said, uh, shout out to all y'all guys and stuff, you know, that be tuning in and everything, Man, I appreciate that and stuff, you know. I never really thought anybody wanted to hear me ramble or, you know, really just see me, uh, even see me playing with these things, you know, as much as I wanted to see other people talk about them and play with them and stuff. But, you know, I appreciate that, man, you know. So with that, you know, I ended off and stuff, you know, y'all all have a good day, man. Appreciate y'all. All right.